guys, in the fast lane here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a scooter that has no start. Now, in this case, we have no spark. We've already pretty much came to that conclusion, but three possible causes for that could be the CDI, the ignition coil, or the stator. We're going to go over that right now. If you need to purchase the items in this video, you can always purchase them underneath my YouTube video in the top comments. I always pin it to the top. And if you're on my website, it'll be underneath the video. It'll say, shop this video. The first way to identify that you don't have any spark is to disconnect your spark plug wire, put a screwdriver in it, and then you want to come really close to the valve cover as you're cranking it. And you should get a little arc coming off there. And if you see a little bit of electricity, then that means you got spark. Now, the few things that could be wrong with this is, one, it could be your CDI. This one's a racing CDI, and this guy is the stock one. Uh, if you don't know what CDIs are, they're basically the control unit. It's like a computer, how a car has an ECU, electronic control unit, same thing. This one actually works off of the RPM, so when you get an aftermarket one, it unlimits it. Now the three things that could be wrong is your ignition coil, your CDI, and your stator. And the stator is actually on this side, I'll have to show you that in a little bit. But coil, ignition coil packs, I would say would be the second common thing. The first thing would be their stator, and the third would be the CDI. Now we're going to go ahead and test this stator out of the scooter, but you can also do this inside the scooter by just disconnecting the plug. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our multimeter to resistance. All right, it looks like this little headphone signal right there, and if you're looking right here, it's like an omega sign. Set that to resistance, and we're going to go ahead and put the pin on right here on the yellow wire. So we want the yellow wire. I have this little tool made. And I'm going to take an alligator clip and a positive or negative terminal. I just personally don't like uh, jamming the pins in like most people do, and then they widen it, and then when you go to plug it back in the scooter, it doesn't connect it has or has a poor connection. So we're just going to take these two, kind of clip them together. Set that right there. Now we're going to take the negative terminal, negative lead, and we're going to go ahead and stick it on anywhere on this part right here. So you can put it on this piece right here, right there, or all, any of this metal right here. So we're going to go ahead and hit this, and we're going to get a reading. Right, so we're at 1.1, I'd say. And make sure you don't touch it with your hand because your hand will release resistance. There's resistance in the human body. So let's go 1.1. If we look at the owner's manual here, it says when testing the uh, yellow wire, we want 0 0.1 to 1.0 ohm. Now, we're point one off. This is a good uh, stator. Next, go ahead and put the plug in the white wire right here. So we're going to test the white wire. And we're going to take our ground terminal and put it on the ground. Same place as before on the silver part. And let's give it a second. So we're getting a reading of like 2.2, 2.1, 2.2. And what it says here in the manual it says uh, we need a ratio from 0 0.2 to 1.2 ohms now I'm not gonna go off this because I've been reading a lot of stuff where a lot of folks have had the same issues I'm having where you can be anywhere from like 3, three ohms and you're good so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in this is a brand new one if it's not good when I put it in, then obviously we have a problem. Now I'm going to test the igniter wire. And that wire color is black and red, or red and black. It runs to the stator. So get that, and we're going to go ahead and set our multimeter. We need to set our multimeter to volts, and we want uh, AC volts. So I'm going to set it to AC right here. This one's an auto-selecting. So we got it set to volts and AC. Now with this, you need to go ahead and crank the scooter. So I'm going to crank it, and you'll be able to watch. And we want to get somewhere over 30-some 
AC volts. So as you can see, we got over 35, 36, something like that. And that's what we're looking for. So the igniter wire, that's uh, that's working. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the stator. Now the stator comes off right over here on the flywheel side. This wire right here that goes right down in here. If you follow it up on the GY6139 QMB engines, just pull it out like that, and that's it. It's a five pin. We have a few 5 16 bolts we need to remove. We have one here, two here, and there's one underneath here, and then this fan shroud will come right off. And also one more, forgot to mention right here. Take the tire shield off. And that's it. Now we got the fan and the flywheel. Now go ahead and you can turn this flywheel, put it on the T right here with this line. That'll set it at top dead center. You can go ahead and take out these one, two, three, four, five sixteenths in the flywheel. And set that aside. Now there's a pickup right here sensor that senses every time the flywheel has a revolution it shoots spark. So there's a little tab right here on top if you can see right there and every time it goes past this pickup it goes ahead and fires. So we got two 5 sixteenths right here Go ahead and take those out. Go ahead and remove this either 14 millimeter or 916 six point from the flywheel. Now you're gonna have to purchase yourself a stator tool. This is a stator puller. You can find this underneath uh, the YouTube video. Say shop this video in the top comments and if you're on my website it'll say shop this video underneath the video. The website's in the fast lane with the letter N T H E F A S T L A N E dot com. So in the fast lane dot com. Basically you back it out the center bolt and you gotta figure out which size. This has two sizes a smaller thread pattern and a larger. It needs to go in the middle of the flywheel. So the bigger one this isn't the one we need, so we back it out all the way, and then we reverse it. Start to screw it in there that way. And then we take this, and we start to tighten it in the thread here till we get it all the way in. And you want to get quite a bit of thread on there because you don't want to go tighten in this, and it pushes it out, and then it strips the thread on here. Now I have five or so threads in here and you're gonna get yourself a 17 millimeter socket put it on then here and now we're gonna go ahead and turn this in. Now if you don't have an impact you can get yourself a 17 millimeter socket or wrench and a 7 8 socket or wrench on the stator puller and you're just basically gonna tighten it like this. You're gonna bring them together. Now I suggest getting gloves and maybe a small pipe so you can pull them together because it takes quite a bit of force to get these off. I'm going to go get my other impact uh, to pull this off. And there we go. Just pulled it right out. The stator. Pulled the flywheel away from the stator and this is the part that we have to uh, replace. Now there's also a keyway right here. So if you look real carefully there's a key right here. You can't really see it on this side, but make sure you line it up on the pulley before you install it. Now all you gotta do is back the stator pulley tool, back it out, and then you should be able to just hand unscrew it. We're pretty much done with that. There's a little washer here, so don't forget you need that washer. This is an eight stator. We already ordered the part. And we got two five sixteenths right here, 
and then all we have to do is go ahead and chase this wire and we're done. Now that it's been removed, you're ready to install the new one. Go ahead and take your new stator and just make sure you have the sensor right here up top with the wire. We're just going to shove it like this, right in the middle here. Take your two five sixteenths and go ahead and hand tighten them for now so that we get the threads lined up. You don't want to strip the threads. It's just the aluminum casting. Get them tight and then do a half inch turn. That should be it. That's all there is for that. Now we're just going to take this little guy right here and you want to basically put this on straight like this. We're going to have to get this wire up and over but if you can see we want the sensor part right here facing down. So like this and we'll take our two five sixteenths and bolt them in there. Now these are the shorter 5 sixteenths. Don't get them confused with the longer ones. The longer ones are this long. We don't need them. We need the shorter ones. So just take note of what you removed earlier. Take the flywheel and you got your washer, make sure you got your washer on the outside and there's also a keyway right here as you can see. And then the keyway is right here on this side. You'll be able to see it when you install yours. But before we do, we're going to go ahead and clean this out real quick with some brake cleaner uh, or if you don't have brake cleaner you can just use some regular rubbing alcohol or Windex and just get off this uh, little bit of dust because you don't want that on the new stator. Now that your flywheel is clean, go ahead and inspect it for any kind of cracks or anything like that inside here. If it all checks out, go ahead and install it. So now mine checked out fine. I'm going to go ahead and take the keyway. I'm going to line it up with this keyway on the side over here. And we also put it to top dead center, so that's another reference point if you don't know about that. So go ahead and line it up. Give it a little wiggle. That one actually pulled it in. So we didn't get it lined up. Let's give it a little wiggle. There we go. We're lined up. We got the keyway in there. Top dead center. Now we're going to go ahead and put the washer on. Now what's left is the flywheel nut. All we got to do is put this on here, thread it in, and if you're going to hit it with a torque wrench, it's 28 foot pounds. I'm just going to hit it with my impact gun. It's going to be a 14 millimeter. Once that's torqued down, go ahead and give it a spin back and forth and just listen to make sure it's not rubbing. Now go ahead and take your fan, and it really doesn't matter which position the fan is in, as long as you bolt it up to these four holes. And we're going to take our 5 16 bolts. Now make sure it's the smaller of the 5 16 bolts. These are the shorter ones. You have a little bit longer, so here's a comparison to these two right here. You don't want them as long as these guys right here. These are a little bit longer so you want the shorter ones. And you're just going to line it up. Just line the holes up to where it is. Put it right in the center. And then go ahead and put all four of these through the fan into the flywheel. Now if you decide to torque these bolts, these 8mm or 5 16 you could use either or socket. Uh, I would only torque them to like 7 foot pounds. So 7 foot pounds on each, just plastic and it has a metal bushing where the bolt goes through so you can't actually crunch the plastic. So 7 foot pounds would be where I would torque them. The next step would be to put the shroud on, but I'm not going to put it on just yet. I'm just going to go up here, I'm going to plug this wire back in where I took it off earlier in the video and see if it fires up just to make sure because you don't want to go installing all this and have another problem. Once the stator is installed and plugged in right here 
My plug's actually a little different than some of your guys'. This is a 2013 Peace Sport scooter, and it has all five pins in the same plug, where yours has three pins, or three pins in the plug, and then two separate little pins on the side. But same wires, color code, and everything, so nothing changed. What you want to do before you go ahead and put it all together is you want to go ahead and ground your spark plug. If you look right here, I got it touching the valve cover inside the spark plug wire and the igniter core uh, coil is all hooked up. Now we're going to go ahead and check our spark. As you can see, we got good spark now. Alright, so I got everything back together and I'm going to fire it up here for you guys in just a few. Basically, with these stators, the new one that I put in there, when we did the test earlier, it was ranging from 1.8 to 2.1 ohms resistance. And the new one that I tested, or the old one, take it back, this is the one that was originally in there. This was actually testing within spec that the P-Scooter manual was telling me. It said that it needed to be anywhere from 0 0.1 to 0 0.8 ohms of resistance. Well, that's what this one was testing. It was testing 8, 0 0.8 ohms. The new one was testing 2.1 ohms or 1.8, somewhere around there. And that was telling me in the manual that it, the new one was bad. Well, now the new one, I've got it installed, and it fires right up, and this old one doesn't. So you really can't go by the ohms of resistance. 